and take it away, Coach Amy. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Mackey, and I am one of the Plant Strong coaches at the Plant Strong for Life. We have all kinds of amazing things going on right now in our Plant Strong community. You're probably taking the Plant Strong Challenge along with us. We are so excited to have you part of our program and posting in the community what you're having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We just love to see all of the meals that you're sharing. And that's why we're here today. We're going to talk about building meals the easy way. And, you know, there is something for everyone in the Plant Strong Lifestyle. That's what I love about this program so much. If you love being in the kitchen and you love crafting recipes or making really deluxe meals, we have so many recipes available for you that you can do that and explore to your heart's content. But we also have something amazing called the build a bowl or build a flat or build a salad, build a breakfast bowl program as part of the seven day rescue diet book that we came out with in 2017. These methods make eating plant strong super, super easy. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about building no recipe meals. And what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that you don't have to really measure anything and you can create as many combinations for meals, bowls, breakfast, pizzas, uh, burritos. There's so many different things that you can create using all of the ingredients that you love without having to measure anything. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, building meals the easy way. Now, I don't want you to think about whether or not you're a culinary expert or you know what flavors pair really well together, because none of that's required. Because here's a little secret. If you've ever gone to a salad bar and built a salad, you are a bowl builder. If you've ever gone to a Subway sub shop and had them build your sub for you, or if you've ever gone to Chipotle, and you've had that decide between a burrito or a quesadilla or a bowl or a salad, you too are a bowl builder. You've already done this. You know what ingredients you like, you know what ingredients you don't like. And so we're gonna talk about how to put those things together in a way that you will really enjoy. But the best part is these can be super simple, super quick meals that you make if you do a little bit of preparation ahead of time. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, one of the things that we love at Plant Strong is batch cooking. I'm going to teach you uh, how to batch cook your bowl base ingredients. And what does that mean? Bowl base ingredients could be anything like brown rice or baked potatoes or quinoa or lentils or maybe um, buckwheat, uh, polenta. All of those things are great bowl builder bases that go into your bowls. And that's part of our batch cooking program. I'm going to be talking about that on Saturday. If you'd like to download the batch cooking guide, it is actually linked in this event inside the Plant Strong community, or you can find it under topics and then downloads in your main menu. This PDF on batch cooking is going to be integral to what we do for bowl building. And basically what it means is you're going to prep all of the ingredients that require a little bit more time, like brown rice, for example, or when you bake potatoes, they're going to take like 45 minutes, right? So all of those things are going to take a little bit more time. When you have your batch cooking done, you will have ingredients that you can choose from to fill up your bowls. And so when you're going to put those things together, you can just grab some brown rice from the refrigerator, or there's other ways that you can do this as well. One of the things that I really love about this day and age is that you have choices. You can make your rice from scratch. You can buy frozen rice. You can buy shelf stable rice that's already in a bowl. You can buy ingredients that are already prepped you can strip your own kale if you like to, or you can buy the bag of it already chopped up. When we come to plant strong cooking, it is entirely up to you about how you want to go about this. You could do it the simple, super simple way. You can do it a complicated, more labor intensive way. It's entirely up to you. But let me give you a little background here. I personally would not have lasted on this plan for more than a few days if I had to prep every single ingredient and if I had to create a recipe for every single meal. So what I'm going to teach you today is my method for making this the easiest, most painless, fastest process possible so that way you can have some really amazing meals in no time flat. One of the cool things about this day and age is that you can buy ingredients that are already processed, meaning chopped up sweet potato cubes. You can get green onions that are already cut for you if you don't want to chop them up at home. 
You can do that, of course. But like I said, I'm going to teach you how to do it the simple way. What you're seeing on your screen right now is a selection of items that are already prepped for you. These are things that you can either heat up in the microwave or throw into a saute pan and heat them up really quickly. You don't have to peel anything. You don't have to chop anything. These are ingredients that you'll find in your freezer section that are single ingredient or maybe a couple of ingredients like a uh, onion bell pepper mix, for example. But none of these have any extra added oil. These are all just straight ingredients that you can add to your bowls by simply microwaving or sauteing, thawing them out, however you want to do it. When you go to your grocery store, I want you to take a look at all of the things in the freezer section. And you might have to do a little label reading because sometimes you'll find that they have seasoning, they might have oil, they might have extra salt added. The things that you're seeing on the screen in front of you are all naked ingredients, just beets or just sweet potatoes, just black eyed peas. So when you are looking through the freezer section, look for those things that you like. One of my favorite things is the sweet potato cubes. They're completely naked, no seasoning, no oil, already peeled and diced and ready to go. You can heat these up in the microwave for just three minutes and you've got your bowl base ready to go. So look and see what's available to you. These, believe it or not, were all purchased at Walmart. Everything that you see on your screen. So it just depends on your local grocery. Know that you can ask your grocery buyer if you can find someone that will help you say, listen, I understand that you have this product, but I'm not seeing it available in my store. Is there any way that you could get this product for me? For example, the organic sweet potato cubes. If you ask, sometimes they'll make it happen for you. So check your local grocer, look through the freezer section, look in the refrigerated section as well in the produce section. For example, for let's say that it's just you, you're the only person eating this way in your household and nobody else likes onions. You can buy a little container of onions already chopped or the frozen version as well. Those things can make life super simple when you really need it to be. Now, what do we talk about for bowl building? These are super simple meals. You can make it as super simple or as complicated as you'd like. But basically we have some simple ingredients here, black eyed peas, baby spinach, some steamed brown rice, a couple of seasonings or some hot sauce, that can be a meal. You don't have to measure the ingredients. You're just gonna toss these things into the bowl together. It doesn't matter whether you have a half a cup of beans or you have a whole cup of beans, you know your appetite best. But basically we wanna make sure you're having greens with all of these meals. So as you see through the three pictures here, these three examples of what a simple meal could be, super greens with some beet chunks, a squeeze of orange with some seasoning and some garbanzo beans. Boom, you've got yourself a meal. And here's another tip. If you're in a hotel or traveling, the bowl that the super greens come in, that can be your bowl and everything. You can have a meal compact right there, ready to go. All you need to do is open that can of beans. And if you check your local grocer, you might even find the cans of beans that have the pop top, no can opener required. So that can be a meal right there. Now, could you heat that up in the microwave? Sure. Could you eat at room temperature? Absolutely. Could you eat it fresh out of the refrigerator? You can do it that way too. It just depends really on how you like to have your food, your food, what environment you're in. If you're at the office and you have the ability to microwave something, wonderful. If you're traveling cross country, but you have this bowl already made up for you, you can eat at room temperature. It will be fine. Now, you can also have the Japanese sweet potatoes with some hummus and some dinosaur kale with the green onions and a little bit of turmeric. That makes a great meal too. These are very basic, very simple. You can make it more complicated or you can just stay like this. So here's an example of something a little more complicated, but built the same way. We've got black rice ramen with some um, purple kale and green kale steamed. There is green onions, jalapenos, carrots, there's mango, red uh, cabbage, a little bit of avocado. There's some kumquats in there as well. And some um, five spice seasoning uh, on top of the ramen noodles. This is a complicated or exotic meal, but it's actually built the same way. The noodles took a few minutes to steam uh, or to boil and the kale took a few minutes to steam. Everything else in here is raw. So this is kind of like a sushi bowl a little bit um, uh, on the right hand side and, and a ramen bowl on the left. These, this is black lentils that was already prepared at Target. They actually have in a package black lentils with no added oil. So that's what you're seeing there. In addition to some brown rice that was frozen that I heated up in the microwave. We've got steamed asparagus with some uh, enoki mushrooms and some sprouts with beet hummus, a little bit of avocado and some kale there as well. 
little dash of hot sauce because I like things a little spicy. But this is just showing you an example of how you can add more exotic ingredients to a bowl and still make it in the same sort of five minute time, time span. It shouldn't take more than five minutes to steam your vegetables or to microwave anything that you're going to heat up that might be frozen. So basically all of these Sorry, meals I'm going to show you today, <laughs> all of these meals I'm going to show you today are actually five minutes or less once you have your bases created. So in addition to making fancy meals, let's explode this a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. Now you can throw this together in any way that you like. You can mix all of your ingredients up so that everything's all, all combined in the bowl, or you can divide things out like this. I created this image for you just so you could see what all is in the bowl. This is basically some pre-cooked quinoa. Every other ingredient you see here is actually just raw. There's corn, there's black beans out of a can, there's mango that I diced up, red bell pepper, the, uh, a little bit of avocado and some tomatoes with a lime to squeeze over the whole thing. And the only ingredient here that I added to this bowl that wasn't a single ingredient was just Amazon dressing, which you will find in the seven day rescue diet book. I think it's also in the engine to cook book as well, but basically it's just one of our dressings. So you can put everything together in your bowl. You can combine it all up. You can have it room temperature. You can heat it up in the microwave, add, add cold ingredients to the top, things like mm, broccoli sprouts. You wouldn't want to heat up necessarily. You'll add those later, but you can add these things in any combination that you like. If you don't like the red peppers, skip them. That's the best part about bowl building. You can customize this so it's exactly the way you like to eat your bowls. If you don't like hot sauce, that's okay take all of the hot stuff off of the examples that I'm going to show you. And you don't have to have that extra added heat. It's just something that I enjoy. So just know that it doesn't matter whether you are putting this on a plate, on a bowl, heating it up, having it raw. Let's say you like some of these ingredients, but you really want a salad, build more greens at the bottom and throw those ingredients on the top. You don't have to have it be certain ratios. You can divide this up any way you want. We just wanna make sure that you're getting those greens in there. So for example, in this bowl, you'll see the spinach here. Now, there are some other ingredients um, that you can throw into bowls like sparks. If you have seen our meal builder guides from the seven day rescue diet book, you might know about sparks. And if you don't, sparks are just condiments. They're the things that really spice up a, a, a dish. It could be anything from oregano or garlic or hot sauce. You could add hummus as a spark, something like um, hemp hearts or um, cinnamon on a breakfast bowl would also be a spark. So there's an endless possibility of things that you can add to really flavor up your bowls. You can also add sauces. There are different sauces that you can make, especially in the Engine 2 cookbook. There's a lot of different sauces in there from teriyaki sauces and things of that nature to adding pasta sauce to a bowl or thinning barbecue sauce with water, for example, makes a great salad topper when you've got potatoes in there and maybe some black beans. There's endless possibilities to the things that you can actually do to build a bowl and what flavors you pack into that. Now, some of the examples I'm going to show you might have some recipes. For example, the lentils here, you'll find a recipe in the topic section of the Plant Strong community under Plant Strong Recipes for lentil crumbles. This is just a, a recipe that I make that are, are different textures uh, to make up sort of a sloppy joe mix, but you can add an endless variety of spices to make it all different ways. And you'll see that in the recipe itself. But most of these bowls that I'm gonna show you don't actually have a recipe and there's nothing in there that requires you to have a recipe as well. These are just things that you throw together in the same way you build that salad at the salad bar or you put together and pick and choose which salsas you want on your bowl at Chipotle or what, what toppings you like for your sandwich, for example. Maybe you like mustard and somebody else in your household likes ketchup. Okay. So you get to decide what you want to put on your bowls. And one of the really neat things about bowl building is that it can be a wonderful activity for families that maybe are eating a little differently. So say, um, as a kid, I hated onions. I never wanted onions on anything. You can just skip the onions when you're building that bowl for that person. If you have family members that aren't following our plan, say that they're still eating meat, you can add some chicken to any one of these bowls for whoever in your household is not following our plan. That's a really easy thing to do. And you're still eating the same things, but slightly modified 
without having to make multiple recipes for multiple people. That's one of the really neat things about bowls. So I want you to think about things like um, a pasta bar that you could build pasta bowls and everybody would get to add their own toppings. A potato bar where you take baked potatoes and you can add your own toppings there as well. There are taco bars, there's a pizza building bar. There's so many endless possibilities to how you can put together flats, bowls, and salads just by adding the different ingredients from different containers. So if you are chopping things up ahead of time or buying your ingredients pre-made, all of those things that you set out on a counter, when you are building your bowls, your family members can add their own ingredients as well and build a bowl as well. So this can be a really great device for mm, mixed households that are following different plans, for example. So I'm gonna go down the list and I'm gonna show you a couple of different things here that we have on this guide. This is something that we have in the Plant Strong Coaching Program that we teach people how to build lots of different bowls. Here are just some examples, some greens with breakfast with some brown rice and cinnamon and some plums. And then if maybe you like a savory breakfast, you could do the same thing with um, shredded hash browns. You've probably seen Jane and Anne make hash browns in a panini maker. You can do that as well for building a bowl like this. And then you choose your toppings, whatever you wanna throw in there. And then in addition to that, there's a, you know, uh, all kinds of different things that you can, you can do from beet hummus to Swiss chard and some Yukon gold potatoes. And you might've seen Rip's uh, cheesy chickpeas that he loves to make. Uh, this is a, a variation of the cheesy chip chickpeas done in a bowl with some greens and other things here as well. So these are just some examples of all the amazing things that you can do with bowls. Right. You've got kidney beans with a baked potato and a grilled onion with some corn. This is kind of a barbecue vari variation. If you really, really like that kind of barbecue flavor, this is a great way to make a bowl. This is another bowl here that I tossed together that's sort of um, uh, Asian fusion. And we've got mango and we've got some fresh pico de gallo. There's cilantro and some uh, these are sprouted peas with some brown rice and some salad greens here and some jalapenos, of course, for me. Um, you've seen this bowl already. This is one of the, um, the sushi bowls that I like to make. And here's another one that we did a Hasselback potato, which just means that you slice it almost all the way through with some grilled uh, mushrooms and some bell, baby bell peppers with, uh, these are Brussels sprouts with a little smoked paprika and some hummus in the middle. So these are just some examples of all the different kinds of bowls that you can make. Literally, I don't think I've ever built the same bowl twice. Um, there's just endless possibilities to the things that you can do when you are putting together ingredients in a bowl without actually using a recipe. This one here is just some hummus that I added some extra turmeric to, and um, it's got some baby bok choy and some other uh, vegetables, asparagus and carrots and red cabbage with uh, the mushrooms. I love mushrooms. And this are, these are uh, black rice noodles. And so there's uh, a bunch of different things that you can make when you're thinking about a bowl, I want you to think outside the box about all the different ingredients that you can put together, or better yet, think inside the box. This is one of those greens buckets, right, that you get at the grocery store with the pre-chopped greens, everything ready to go, that I turned into a salad because I knew I was going to be gone all day and I was going to be hungry. So this was a pack and go salad bowl already put together with a beet burger and a bunch of different veggies and some dressing already set to go. There are endless possibilities to what you can do with bowl building, but don't forget you can also build flats. Flats are things like pizzas, burritos, tostadas. There are even things like toast. One of my favorites, this one, is a uh, Pittsburgh salad. I'm from Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh salads are notoriously not healthy for you. They're generally consist of ranch dressing and cheese and chicken and French fries over a salad but I made it a plant strong version by using a barbecue sauce dressing with some hummus over a big salad with roasted un oven potato French fries. Whether you're using uh, russet potatoes or Yukon gold potatoes, these are all great things that you can use to build a bowl. This is some frozen, uh, frozen dragon fruit cubes over here on my breakfast salad with some peaches and some pineapple, um, a really great way to have a refreshing breakfast in the summertime. There's so many different flavor profiles that you can play with. Um, different herbs and spices is one of the things that we talk about in the Plant Strong Coaching Program as well. Um, how to combine flavors. Like this one here is one of my favorite sort of Cuban breakfasts. It is black beans and pineapple and kale with some uh, 
Cajun seasoning on um, the sweet potato fries that I baked. This is a really refreshing sort of sweet and savory breakfast that you can put together. Again, these are black beans out of the can, no recipe required, just with a squeeze of lime and some cilantro. It's super flavorful with some fresh fruit, steamed greens, and some leftover sweet potato fries. Um, Everything that you see here was just assembled really easily. This is my favorite breakfast in the whole world. It's just some steamed kale with um, Yukon grilled potatoes with hummus and hot sauce and salsa. I could eat this every day for the rest of my life and not be mad about it. Um, when you're putting together your bowls, you can do it in the moment when you're building um, your lunch, or you can do this ahead of time. For example, whether you use uh, mason jars or you have another kind of container that you like to do, you could build, for example, this bowl here with the sweet potatoes and the kale and the beets and the chickpeas. You could build that ahead of time. You could say, make three of them and have them stashed in the refrigerator. So that way you have something that is ready to grab and go that you could take with you to the office or the park or wherever you may be headed. Um, these are things that you can build ahead of time and just heat up. In addition to that, like I said, breakfast bowls, lunch bowls, salads, flats, everything represented here. These are some pitas with some baby beet greens with um, uh, avocado and some strawberries. It made a really delicious lunch. Um, really simple. You don't have to get really complicated. You can just use really interesting ingredients. And that's sort of the best part about the plant strong world. There are so many vegetables and fruits and grains and beans to choose from. There's an endless possibility to the things that you can do with them. And I want you to keep your mind open. For example, we generally have quinoa as a savory dish, but I have it here infused with some berries. Um, that made a spectacular lunch with a squeeze of lemon. It really works. If you think about your grains as sort of a blank canvas, you can take them savior, savory or sweet. I grew up eating white rice with cinnamon, sugar, and milk at my grandmother's house. But then again, you can have rice savory as well. So quinoa, buckwheat, farro, barley, all of those things can be taken in either direction. And if you've seen Ann Esselstyn make savory oats, there is uh, another way to make oatmeal as well. It doesn't have to be sweet like this with fruit. You could actually have it savory. Um, I love the fact that you can play with your food on this plan. You can switch things up. Here's some uh, mangoes uh, with creamy brown rice cereal from Bob's Red Mill with some uh, walnuts and cinnamon with a side of beets with some orange and thyme. This is a great breakfast. Um, and I never tend to eat the same thing exactly the same way twice. Like here again is my favorite breakfast with Yukon gold potatoes, with the hummus, the hot sauce, and the kale, right? But it looks a little different. Same thing goes for this quinoa. You can uh, mix in some lemon juice or lime juice, and these are pineapple um, with over arugula. It makes for a really refreshing lunch as well. Again, here's a flat. Instead of building it with peanut butter or something like that, there's thin slices of avocado with some sli thin slices of mango, cucumber, and strawberries with some blueberries and some spinach. This makes a really refreshing breakfast as well. So you don't have to always have oatmeal. You don't have to have a savory breakfast if you don't like it. I posted this morning that I had black eyed peas and collard greens for breakfast, and that's not everyone's bag, and that's okay because there are options here for everybody. Also, one of the sparks that we like to use is balsamic vinegar. And here is a Sicilian lemon balsamic vinegar that's really tasty. I recommend that you look around in your local community to find a distributor that sells uh, balsamic vinegars because often they have little samples that you can try. Most of the bottles that you're going to find are going to be bigger. And it's really nice to be able to taste those. Um, before you buy a big bottle. So if you can find a local place where you can test out some balsamic vinegars, I highly recommend it. But there are also places that you can buy online if you don't have a local place that will, uh, that has little sample sizes that you can try as well. I know California Balsamics is one of those companies. So that makes a great spark and they come in so many different flavors that you just can't go wrong. There's so many different things that you can do. Here's another example of a spark. Sauerkraut makes a great spark. Most of the sauerkrauts made today are actually cold processed and refrigerated and those are generally lower in sodium and we just use a little bit as a spark so it can be a really amazing topper for a burger or a bowl or a salad for that matter. 
Um, lots of other suggestions here. Here are some onion rings that I made using our tavern mushroom recipe that is basically just cornmeal, flax meal, and some spices that you toss on. Uh, some wet onions that you can bake. You can do the same thing with mushrooms to make a really crispy treat. Those recipes you can find in the topic section of the Plant Strong community under Plant Strong Recipes. But I really hope that you've gotten some ideas here from all of the different um, things that I'm showing you on the screen as ways that you can build bowls. I want you to really get creative with it and have some fun because ultimately food should be fun. It shouldn't be stressful. And we don't want you to be stressed out over having to cook complicated things or use weird ingredients you've never heard of before. This plan can be very simple. It can be super satisfying and it can be amazingly delicious. I know that your taste buds are changing and you're trying some new things and having greens for breakfast or even greens for lunch can be challenging when you're first getting started. But ultimately, my goal was from the beginning when I started this plan 10 years ago, that I thought if I made my food look amazing and taste delicious and I could do it in an easy fashion that wasn't time consuming, I thought that this way of life could be really sustainable. And you know what? I was right. I never run out of things to try or taste or flavor combinations. New herbs and spices um, are one of my favorite things to try out. Different combinations of food that we can have, uh, different ways to build things. These are some cornbread croutons that I made out of leftover um, cornbread. There's just an endless possibility to the things that you can do with so many different plant-based ingredients at your fingertips. You can make an amazing array of meals and I hope that you see something here that might be your next favorite bowl. Um, we will be talking more about how to do this on Saturday in our batch cooking um, 101 uh, with the guide that goes along with that. So you can see all of the different amazing ways that you can cut down the amount of time that you actually use to um, prep your food. When we do our batch cooking example on Saturday, I'm going to show you how you can batch cook your base ingredients in an hour or less, right? So once you do that, most of these meals take five minutes or less, like this one here, for example. This is uh, the chili cheese fry sauce that's over here, made into a grilled cheese flat salad. Pretty amazing. All kinds of uh, time-saving tips for you and all kinds of different ways that you can combine your food so that way you can have amazing plant-strong meals. Never eat the same thing twice and never get bored of your food by simply building bowls, flat salads, and breakfast bowls. I love the fact that you came and shared this time with me today. This is a topic I could talk to you about for 17 hours. I love building bowls, and I hope if you have any questions about bowl building, you will hit me up in the community where I can answer your questions and point you in the right direction if you need help finding something or how to assemble something. I would love to share more ideas with you. So thank you for coming and talking with me today about bull building. I cannot wait to see your creations. I hope you really get into this and I hope you'll share using the community meals tag in the Plant Strong community so everyone can see what you're making as well. You never know what meal you make might be somebody else's new favorite thing. So thanks for coming and sharing with me today. I hope to see you in the Plant Strong community and keep going on your Plant Strong challenge. You are doing great.